Hello, I'm Michael Pascoe. It's Monday, April 29, the start of Bank Week. And for once, that doesn't really mean the Reserve Bank. There is an interest rate cut expected in Europe on Thursday night and profits from three Australian banks to consider, as well as a Federal Reserve Board meeting that really won't do anything, but markets will hang on every nuance anyway. Elsewhere, there's another Chinese Purchasing Managers Index, local building approvals, some housing price and sales data, and most of all, yet more jockeying and positioning ahead of the federal budget. Yes, there does seem to be a bit more than usual around, so let's start with that. Wayne Swan has his half hour up on the stage tomorrow fortnight, so the various lobby groups have left their run a bit late in trying to stake out some moral high ground, as the Mineral Councils did last week with a study it commissioned on the structural deficit. That study pointed the finger at Howard and Rudd governments for wanton spending. Yes, despite the surpluses, history is judging Peter Costello as a second-rate treasurer. But I suppose the Minerals Council wouldn't like to consider the corollary that perhaps we should have a decent minerals resources rent tax a decade ago, or maybe even now. There does seem to be more stuff around than usual about the difficult economic challenge of this and subsequent budgets. Maybe that's a reflection of the dangers of an election year budget when the present government knows it's going to lose and the future government is an unknown quantity when it comes to rational economics. But maybe it's also an indication of the slow but ongoing process of moving towards sound policy, a steady spreading of awareness about the big problems that then begin to beg an answer. There's really no surprise in this, though. Much of the present discussion about fiscal deficits was inherent in the Henry Review. It also was front and centre at the tax summit in October 2011, something I know a little about because I co-chaired it. Despite the low media expectations for that summit, it turned out to be a worthwhile exercise that's still working its way through the system. It was an opportunity lost that Joe Hockey and co boycotted it for cheap political reasons, as they might have learned something and certainly could have contributed to the policy development we need on such difficult issues. But at this low ebb in the Australian body politic, that would be expecting too much. It was blindingly obvious then, 18 months ago, that Australia is facing severe fiscal challenges if it wants governments to continue providing the present level of services, let alone increase them. The states have debased their revenue sources and lacked the political metal to fix even the taxes that do harm to their citizens, while the feds are in no position to bail anyone out. The budget has potential to make this worse, by the Gillard Swan administration wanting to go out on a high note of delivering, or at least promising to deliver, a so-called National Disability Insurance Scheme and major education reform, as well as the MBN, and effectively set some improvised explosive devices for Tony Abbott in the process. But for all the present rhetoric, here's a little fact tucked away in the mid-year economic outlook. The federal government is actually spending less on both health and education in the current financial year than it did in 2011-12. Funny that. From governments in the red to banks in the black, the big corporate news this week will be ANZ's interim result tomorrow and Westpac's interim and Macquarie's annual profits on Friday. The market expects modest profit growth from ANZ and Westpac of a bit less than 5%, but as the numbers are big, they will still provide the usual headlines about filthy rich banks. Isn't it nice to be a shareholder, if only through your super fund? And with their still rich dividend schemes, there's nothing wrong with subdued but sustainable growth in these times. Macquarie is a bit harder to pigeonhole, but it's interesting that it increasingly wants to play in the housing lending market, something that would have been considered very pedestrian back in the millionaire's factory's more swashbuckling days. And speaking of housing, March building approvals are out on Thursday. Keep watering those green shoots. In the wide world, China is on holiday for the next three days, May Day and all that, comrades. So our region and key commodity markets should be a little subdued. The Americans have plenty of statistics and the European Central Bank is expected to shave 25 points off its refinancing rate, which would leave it just 50 points above zero. The only way to go from there is um, nowhere much. Talk to you Friday.